I fell ill with just a man flu, just a normal kind of November cold, and it got worse and worse and worse. And then two weeks after that, I found myself in ICU, um, but it led to septicemia, toxic shock syndrome, necrotizing fasciitis, and multiple uh, limb loss. All my students that I've ever taught have hands. And so it's really hard for us to understand what not having hands is like, and therefore, how do we design something that we have no experience of? So a great thing about this project is working with Alex, who is very inspiring. So he inspires me as an academic and a researcher. He inspires the students and he inspires people who have a limb difference to go out and do things, live their life and accomplish everything that they want to accomplish. So the, the adventure or the challenges started with skydiving. And then as soon as I'd done that, it was like, what else can we do? That led to kayaking around the southern tip of Greenland. I think at that point, we had nothing to lose. So I was going to sort of try everything available to me. But we had to prove that we could row. So we decided to start in Harlem Bay, cycle to Falmouth, get in the adapted rowing boat at Falmouth Harbour and then row 350 miles to Dover over the course of 13 days. And then just for fun, we then cycled back from Canterbury to Cornwall. So a 30-day uh, mission. I had no idea what the sea was going to offer me. And when I got in the boat, I was absolutely petrified. But I loved it. It was phenomenal. Um, just yeah, one of the best things I've ever done. So I met Nikki and the idea that we come up with is I, I needed a quick release attachments for the oar. Current prosthetic systems is you, you get a 600 pound attachment and it would latch on to the oar. But there's no way of me detaching independently. So I wanted to create something where if I did get in trouble in the boat, I could in theory release and get myself out of the rowing boat, out of the sea, off the oar and then into the water if anything bad happened. So the prosthetics are designed to enable the body power from Alex, who's rowing, to be transferred through the arms onto the oar, and then the oar can power the boat through the water. So a critical part of this process was to speak to Alex, to know how he was expecting to move, and therefore how we could design the arms to enable that power to transfer through to the oars. The benefit is that a lot of the technology that I have to use, like wheelchairs, like prosthetics, have not been designed by amputees or people that are in wheelchairs. The reason why I chose to work with Alex and Nikki on this project is something that's more important than ever. Working with end users to see what it, problems they're facing and what they would like to see more of, and then coming up with a solution that caters to their needs and fulfills what they want to do, what they want to get out of, of the way they live. The mantra that we always go into the unis with has got to be functional, affordable, cool and comfortable. And if you run with that mantra, then you're going to design something that will be utilised by us down the line. But really, if it's not end user led, you're not going to get the right piece of equipment down the line. And I think the more people like me with a disability that can give their time to universities, it's only going to enhance the products down the line.